Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hi. What? Hi. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I, I know. I am so sorry for all this back and forth. <laughs> no, that's that's totally fine. Thanks for a hot. I know you just like got home and no uh, problem. On, so <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Well, I just want to thank you guys for hopping on real quick. I mean, um, I just kind of, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to reach out is, first of all, I love your podcast and I love listening to you guys. And, you know, I'm a huge horror guy myself and I just wanted to kind of get your story and kind of meet you guys and love to hear your backgrounds and how you got into horror and your podcasting and all that. Yeah, definitely. Well, first of all, thank you. Of course. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> yeah. I'm Joe, by the way. Oh yeah. Erica. Well, nice Perfect. to officially meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <what> we're saying. <laughs> Um, Roshane, do you mm -hmm. want me to start or would you like to start? Oh, uh, yeah, Erica, <laughs> by all means. Okay. <laughs> um, so we first met when we were in college. We went to a performing arts school and we were both acting majors. Okay. Um, so we just happened to be put into the same class, which at our college meant that you were part of the same group. And if whatever group you were in, you had every single class together. So okay. we saw each other all like all the all the time, all day mm -hmm. long. And along the way, we both, I think, realized that we have a certain love for horror movies and just the horror genre in general. Mm -hmm. um, so we used to do like horror movie nights together all the time. And then mm -hmm. we play horror video games together as well. Um, so that's what we did like all through college. And then even after we graduated, it was just one of those things that I think always we like always went back to that just really tied us together. Mm -hmm. um, and so obviously, you know, grow, we grew up, I moved um, to, oh, to a different state and we would still keep in touch. But I think the one thing that we always kept in touch about was like anytime a new trailer dropped for a horror movie was, are you going to go see it? Like, what do you, what do you think? Sure. What are your thoughts? Um, so then when the pandemic started, I was listening to a lot more podcast than I had ever been listening to um, because obviously you know I worked at a restaurant at the time and we weren't having customers in the building so I just spent a lot of time alone and so I was like <laughs> I guess I'll just listen to podcasts and feel like other people are here mm -hmm. um, and I don't know it just sounded really fun it seemed really fun to, especially the ones that I listened to most of them were multiple people and it just sounded like hanging out with your friends and talking and so one day I just texted him and was like what do you think about starting a podcast <laughs> and then I said and also we should do it about horror movies because we both love talking about them. And he was just basically was like, yeah, why not? And so <laughs> we, we gave it a try. Mm -hmm. that, that really kind of describes me as a person very much. A, yeah. Why, why not? Kind of guy. Sure, uh, sure. Yeah. She is. So when she hit me up, um, like you said, it was during the pandemic and at the time I was out of work. And so I was kind of just at home anyway, not really doing much. And I didn't know too much about the podcasting scene myself. I hadn't really been um, like a huge podcasting person beforehand. Um, but Erica was a very close friend. And like, we share a lot of similar ideas when it comes to different movies and especially the horror genre. So when she hit me up about it, I was like, yeah, totally. Why not? Like, what, what do I have to lose? Mm -hmm. uh, so we kind of just jumped in head first, not really knowing too much, um, but learning as we went along. And I mean, we're a year and some change in at this point, and it's been an uh, absolute blast so far. So uh, I'm proud of us for making it this far. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's been, yeah. a, it's, been a, it's been a really fun journey. That's, that's awesome. I mean, it, I mean, it seems like, you know, mentioning that performing arts people, it, it makes sense because you guys do seem very fluent and very natural and, you know, behind the mic. So it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's one thing that I think we discussed because we were like, okay, well, we should do a practice episode mm -hmm. and just see if this gotcha. even works. Cause we were like, we are, this might be, it's one thing 
when you're talking around your friends because I think everyone has that idea of like oh I'm so interesting and oh I everybody wants to hear what I say but then we were like this might not even be something that anybody would want to listen to (laughs) like let's just try it out and see how Mm -hmm. it goes but it was definitely different obviously we're used to performing and acting right. and reciting mm-hmm. other people's lines and doing things in front of a camera and so it was different to be so focused on the microphone and to know that audio was the focus and not visual at least for me like that took me a really long time to get used to because I'm just a very animated person when I talk and I when I get into things, I tend to move around a lot. And that's not always great when you're worried about sound. Um, So yeah, it was definitely something that we both, I think, had to switch that kind of mentality for ourselves. Yeah. Um, Where where did you guys? uh, Oh, sorry. No, you go. Go ahead. I was gonna say, where did you guys go to premiere school? Uh, AMDA, which is the American Music and uh, Dramatic Academy. Okay. Uh, most most people just call it AMDA, though, um, but it's a college in Hollywood. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I went to film school in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, so that's oh, nice. kind of similar. Yeah, a lot of performing arts friends myself. So I took a couple okay. acting classes. It was terrible, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. I think everybody should take like at least one They're acting so class. Fun. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, if, if nothing else, I think they kind of help you get out of your box and maybe yes. learn some things about yourself if mm-hmm. even if you're like okay the acting thing's not for me it it is pretty fun to meet other people that are in it most of the time <laughs> i think most of the time <laughs> yeah, actors yeah. are pretty cool totally. people you'll meet some that aren't but i think that's true for like any right anything <laughs> yeah i feel like it's like a just a better speech class like you know yeah. you do the same confidence but it's like it's more fun because you can you know recite your favorite movies and like so for my class our final was they basically we could pick anything we wanted with a partner or by ourselves like a, just a monologue and I don't know why I picked uh the American Psycho the finale when he's on the phone with his lawyer oh that's a good, I was that's like, a good one. it was very ambitious I don't know why I did because I love <laughs> I was like, you know what, why not I'll try it out but uh, it was just weird because it acting for the camera so you know we had to watch it in front of the class and it was oh mm-hmm. yeah it was, luckily I knew all, all my friends there were all performing arts so like I didn't feel weird because I knew everybody in there so it wasn't too weird but uh, yeah it's it's strange though to to hear yourself yes. and like see yourself and be like, oh, that's what other people see. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so like, and that goes right? along with podcasting, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, I, this is new for me as well. I mean, we're not a year, but you know, we've done this for since I want to say March or April-ish and nice. it's still weird, like cutting, you know, cutting, listening to myself and cutting to my, my listening, you know, I'll go on a walk with my dog and I'll listen to it just to, you know, quality check and everything. And it's, it's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's so strange. I, I don't know how long it takes most people. I'm still to this day, not um, used to the sound of my voice. Like I can kind of <laughs> tune it out when I'm doing editing and editing and whatnot, but mm-hmm. it's still kind of jarring because, you know, you hear yourself differently than how, you sound mm-hmm. um and so I, I just always find it so jarring even with like on camera stuff just seeing seeing yourself or like hearing yourself it takes a second to get used to it and being able to kind of separate the okay uh this is what i think i sound like but this is what i sound like so i have to edit according to sure. what this is right. um and it's a process I, <laughs> yeah. definitely process i also you also become very aware of the little ticks and things oh like yeah, have, yeah. Like, oh yeah can be good because then maybe you won't you can kind of work to cut those out like ums or saying like a lot that's things that i <laughs> had to that California i tried to ruined us <laughs> ruined yeah. us with the likes <laughs> <laughs> imagine so you guys are from that area then i presume or not not originally um i was i'm from chicago myself oh, okay, but cool. At this point, been in LA for r- around ten years, so it's mm-hmm. been it's very much ingrained in me at this point. Yeah. Like a lot of little nuances. Sure. Yeah, you're a bit of a Californian at this point. At I this point, yeah. Say that. 
I can't I can't handle anything under 40 degrees at this point. So I call myself a California. (laughs) Yeah, I'm in uh I'm in St. Paul, so uh, I have to learn to handle a negative five, negative twenty degrees. And I'm sure you're I mean from Chicago. Yeah, I I remember those days. I don't miss them, but I remember those days most definitely. It's brutal. (laughs) Yeah, we're we've been here for about two years. I'm from New York originally, went to school in Georgia, and then I was out in Portland, Oregon for three ish years, and now we're here. So nice everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I love, I love Portland. It was fun. I, it was I visited time. there one time and, and yeah. now I'm like, oh yeah, I've been to Portland. <laughs> I'm so excited. Days. I'm going back in October for a, a shining screening at the Timberland. Oh, that's oh, gotta be so fun. Yeah, I'm super soaked on that. And up some mm-hmm. movie locations and I'm very excited about that. So nice, nice. Congrats. Um, thanks. Well, well, so going along with that, I mean, I would love to kind of hear your guys is like, you know, horror favorites. I know that's an impossible question because people <laughs> ask me that all the time and I hate it, but I would love to hear what you guys are into, you know, your genres, your subgenres, your directors, all that kind of stuff. And I do get it. I do kind of get understanding from listening to your podcast, um, which is cool. And I, I feel like we have very similar tastes, which is another reason why, you know, I wanted to reach out. So. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to uh, go first? Do you want me to go first? Why don't you go first? Okay. Because <laughs> I got I to gotta think about it. Yeah, I was like, I give it's you a tough a question. I know. <laughs> Um, so I, it's, I usually tend to enjoy, like if I wake up and I just feel like putting a horror movie on, I'm most likely going to go for a slasher or I'm going to go for body horror. I tend towards the more gory and gruesome films. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think honestly, I think it's because that's what I when I was first getting into horror, I, I watched a lot of those movies. So I think it, as weird as it sounds, it's almost Mm -hmm. like a comfort thing for me throwing those movies on, which is unfortunate for my boyfriend because he's not (laughs) as much a fan of that. But yeah, Mm -hmm. I, I usually go for those if I'm just in the mood for a horror. I, I really love 80s horror Mm -hmm. movies. I just think that that period of horror was so ridiculous and fun and creative, but I also love what they were starting to do with special effects and the way that they were starting to I think they were really diving into body horror during like that period of time, which is probably another thing that I really enjoy about it. But some of my favorites are man, I I love um uh, a nightmare on elm street three is dream warriors is Mm -hmm. one of my favorites amazing um i love return of the living dead it follows is a newer one that i really enjoy Mm -hmm. uh candy man the original we just had to rewatch um for one of our episodes and i it reminded me how much I love <laughs> that movie uh, from me watching it. Sometimes I forget, but yeah, I think those are probably my favorite at the moment. It, oh, oh and Hell Ra- Hellraiser as well. Oh, so nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely body horror. Good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, guys, <laughs> I'm getting a little, get a little theme here, but mm-hmm. yeah, I love those movies and I don't really have any directors that I specifically love I mean I have Wes Craven's movies I Mm -hmm. usually like um and then I Mike Flanagan I think is doing awesome things Mm -hmm. but I'm really bad about director names and so yeah (laughs) so I I don't really have any that I follow their careers to um like closely but yeah those are those are two that just come to my mind I guess Mm -hmm. That's nice. great. Yeah, I just uh, I was rewatching Candyman again today because I'm going to see t- uh, the new one tomorrow. Nice. Which I'm very excited about. I haven't listened to your episode yet because I wanted to watch the movie before I listened to it, but I was, I'm super excited about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. So I got my monkey paw shirt, so I had to. Oh, <laughs> nice. That, yeah. That's a really cool shirt. That really is like really cool. You can get it on their website. Go check it out. <laughs> we might, we might yeah. have to. We both just bought. <laughs> We both just bought Candyman shirts. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice! Um, I gotta do that. Gotta... Which, because oh, no. they were coming out with such cool ones, and oh, I think gosh. both both of us are trying to resist. And then on the on the same day, we both were like, "So, 
I might, I might about have that shirt. shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. had to get the shirt. I totally get it. I'm like that. Me with like midsummer. You know, I'm I'm a big folk horror fan. So mm-hmm. anything folk horror, I'm about it. But did you like the ritual? I After loved that? the ritual. I yeah. personally really did. Yeah, I thought it was really well done. So nice. Yeah, it's cool. Very nice. Yeah. I think Erica is currently reading the book on that. Or, oh, or awesome. it's finished. I may have finished the book actually. Yeah, right? I, I cool. just finished it because I, I didn't even realize until we did the episode on it and did some more research. I didn't even know it was based on a book. Oh, um, okay. So when I saw that, I was like, you know what? I definitely, definitely want to check that out just to see how similar they are. But if you, if you like to read and if you mm. love folk horror, they dive way more into that aspect of it in the book. So okay. you'd probably enjoy it. Sweet. Mm-hmm. About it. Pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> Always down. Um, so in terms, I'm kind of like Erica where, uh, my taste for movies and like favorites will shift on a weekly basis. Um, but growing up, I was always a huge fan of zombie stuff. Like Erica knows this. I'm a zombie head. I love everything about them. Um, played the Resident Evil games at far too young of an age. Um, (laughs) and I think it had like a long lasting effect on me. Mm -hmm. Um, so anything within that realm, uh, 28 days later is one of my favorite movies. Um, but Dawn of the Dead, um, Shaun of the Dead as well, because I actually have a, a, the decent background in comedy. So like, I actually really love horror comedy as a genre as well, because it it combines some of my favorite things. So I love being scared while simultaneously like getting to laugh out loud at stuff. Um, I also grew up watching like all the scary movie movies, um, (laughs) which were a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, But outside of that, I think my other genre that I go back to a lot is paranormal. Um, the paranormal activities are one of my guiltiest of pleasures. Like I've watched all of them several times over just because I love there's I think there's something about the reality of paranormal films that spooks me more than other movies. So I tend to like gravitate towards those because they give me the most like pure scare um, Mm -hmm. out of, you know, the different options that are out there. Um, Candyman as well. After rewatching that. Um, growing up in Chicago too, that was very steeped right. into yeah. the culture as a kid. Like you, everybody heard the legend. Everybody was standing in front of their mirrors, trying to not die to Candyman. <laughs> um, so rewatching that actually brought up a lot of nostalgia for me, and um, I think that has reemerged itself as like one of my favorite horror movies as well. Mm-hmm. I really forgot how good that movie was until I watched it today. I was like, cause I've seen it a couple of times. I think it was like my third or fourth time watching it, but I was like, wow, it still holds up today. And it's, yeah, oh, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Same for me. And I honestly think it's because when I was younger, it, I think I was just so overwhelmed by how scary I thought Candyman was that I didn't actually take time to focus on the full movie itself. And mm-hmm. so I feel like this last time I watched it was the first time I've actually sat down and paid attention to the full story. Sure. And I was like, okay, this is kind of good. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Totally. Yeah. It's funny. Cause like, I kind of feel the same way. Like I remembered some of the scenes, especially with Candyman, it was like all maybe the killing scenes or whatever. And, but I, the story kind of, you know, faded for me a little bit and I totally agree with you. You know, I was watching, I was like, I remember the characters and I remember the setting and everything, but why, why were they in that building? Why were they taking photos? And, you know, why did she get arrested? Right. All this stuff. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this makes sense. And it, uh, I love it. It's great. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I do like Paranormal as well. I'm a big fan. I mean, James Wan is, I think, one of my favorites right now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just, he's mastered the, um, he's mastered the paranormal scare for sure. And I'm very excited to see, hopefully, yeah. no, Lignant. I'm yeah. very positive about that movie. I'm very hopeful for that movie. I'm um, glad he's back. It lo- it, yeah, it looks really good. <laughs> it does. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. But that's cool um yeah i mean yeah i just love talking horror so about yeah, it. <laughs> I, well no i was gonna say kind of going off of what we were talking about with candy man is i i feel like that happens with horror movies a lot is the you know the scares are what we remember and so sometimes the story itself can either like fall to the wayside which is sometimes a bad thing because it's an amazing story and maybe we just weren't paying attention to that and then sometimes it's a good thing because maybe it's not that great of a movie but you just remember the scares Mm -hmm. because I feel like obviously Friday the 13th just passed by so I started re-watching all of those and (laughs) I you know I always forget 
everything about those movies. I know if you asked me specifics about any of those movies, I can tell you, but if you ask me about any of the kills, I could probably lay those out for you. So right. <laughs> rewatching it, I was like, I don't what is, I don't remember any of these people. I don't know what I don't remember <laughs> right. any of this story. I just remember Jason. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a do you have a favorite Friday? The second one. Ooh, I love the second one. Yeah. The second one is actually pretty pretty. I think good. second or third. I love the honestly, the first like four are so good. Like such mm-hmm. a good oh, cause the I just love that camp atmosphere. Like I think the first one captures it so well and that carries on. And like sleepaway camp is amazing and the um the burning and it's I just love that camp atmosphere, I think. But I think like yeah, we're talking like slashers. I think like Halloween, I think might be my favorite, like total, but I mean they're all so good. Mm-hmm. They're all amazing. They are. I but. think I, I do think for Friday the 13th, they, they set themselves, obviously, I agree, the camp environment is so amazing. So I almost feel like they set themselves up in a way where when they started to go away from the camp, it didn't, it, yeah. it, you understand why, because they wanted to try something different, but it didn't, it didn't hit in the same way as when they were at the camp. So mm-hmm, for sure. It's it is what it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now I just listened to your Get Out episode today. Um, oh, I, nice. I mean, I I think Get Out is oh, it's one of my favorites that's come out in the past, you know, dozens of years. So I think I, I loved hearing it, and I loved your guys's you know takes on it, and I agreed with basically everything you said. And uh, I'm just excited for Jordan Peele, and I I assume you, I mean, you guys Jordan Peele Jordan Peele fans, then uh, you like to Get oh, Out. And, oh, okay, we we <laughs> may or may not enjoy a Jordan Peele. I was like, because I remember you said in the web, or your uh, the episode, you're like, you said something about you know, reach out to us, send us an email. Like, oh, my oh my gosh, that yeah. would be life changing for me as well. <laughs> that would am- be like the the peak. I would oh, like, I don't even know where to, where do you go from there? Just projectile vomit. <laughs> I'd be done. I'd be done. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we're ending the show, guys. Like, uh, there's peaks. nothing else. There's nowhere else to go. <laughs> I just love, like, I mean, I'm sure you guys, I don't know if you guys have watched his interviews or anything on YouTube and, but mm-hmm. he, I just love how he's like a nerd and it's amazing because yeah. we can relate mm-hmm. so well. And I don't know if you saw that interview where he was wearing like the Jack Torrance outfit, like a subtle nod to it. I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, one I don't think I saw that there one. Was, I, so. I can't remember what it was, but he was wearing the, you know, the, the plaid or the, um, uh, what's it called? Why am I blanking on this? The it's like the plaid long sleeve shirt. The flannel. 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 Yes. <laughs> I lived in Portland. I should know this. <laughs> he's wearing like the flannel and like the other mm-hmm. shirts. And it was like, like he didn't say it was a nod, but it was literally like the exact outfit. And it's just like, you just know this guy loves it. And it's yeah. Yeah. watching like, cause I watched Keen Peel, you know, growing up and stuff. And I, it was great, but I didn't, you know, I was like, this is fun. This is great. But I didn't really understand a lot of the references. And after, you know, learning more about his horror nerdness, you know, going back and watching all of those, you know, like the gremlins references and all this other stuff. It's so, it's so amazing. And yeah. yeah. Like us was just, Mm-hmm. It, there, it's funny because uh, like I was bringing up before with a little bit of a background in comedy it's one of those things that uh, I think surprises a lot of people because it even surprised me when uh, Jordan Peele was branching out and then suddenly he was doing horror stuff and I think everybody was collectively like horror like after <laughs> Key and Peele like right, wait right. what um, but then he comes out and just knocks it out of the park right and I think there is Uh, There's like a very I always think there's a very fine line between comedy and horror where like they're two different approaches, but they still are trying to invoke a feeling out of you that I think a lot of people who have backgrounds in comedy find a lot of you find that a lot of them are horror fans as well, because it's all about this notion of making somebody feel something in Mm -hmm. one regard. It's laughter, but in the other regard is, you know, terror or fear or whatnot. And I think uh, this could be just biased because I do love horror comedy as well, but um, I think that's a big reason why people love a lot of the Jordan Peele stuff and the Monkey Paw stuff is although they are usually either very terrifying, thought provoking, what have you, they're usually kind of funny as well. Like there's usually some like subtle comedy to it where it's like you're not just completely scared out of your mind the whole time. Like you're also enjoying the ride a little bit. And that's why I'm like, even though they seem like polar opposites, I do think the two genres share enough that when like you use them as masterfully as he does, uh, you end up with products that um, are both a fun time, but also uh, really scary and thought provoking. 
I a hundred percent agree with that. And I think, you know, that goes, you know, to scream for me, that kind of brings me to that as well. And it's, I think it's very hard to do a horror comedy. Like, I think it's very, very difficult. And I think I haven't seen a lot where they've really worked for me, but I think you're hundred percent right with that. And Jordan Peele's nailed it. And I would love to see more of that because like get out wouldn't be, I mean, it would be amazing, but Rod literally is like yeah. <laughs> the, the missing puzzle piece to that, that movie. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's perfect. Like it's, he masterfully done <laughs> respected <laughs> so yeah. totally great great that so yeah that's very true and and even with I mean us because I mm-hmm. I was wondering when I saw the trailer for that movie I was like I wonder how they're going to involve humor into into this one and I feel like even with that one, it was these great moments because I think what people forget sometimes is humor doesn't have to be a line that you say. It can be in the editing. It can be in the music. There, I think that's why movies are so great is because you can utilize every aspect of them to add humor. And I think because Jordan Peele is so visual and his movies are so use that so well that he just knows how to like involve humor at moments that you aren't expecting it in so many different ways and it always it always impresses me with how easily he like weaves it in there and doesn't take away from the tension like it's it's enough to make you like have a breath of relief but you still remember it's a horror movie it's not right it doesn't completely take you out of it for Mm -hmm. sure yeah, I think that's that's so true. And it's funny because like my girlfriend, she also just despises, she does not like horror. I mean, she'll watch them with me. You know, if I'm really into a movie, she'll go with me to the theaters and she'll suck it up. But she usually does not like <laughs> horror. But she loved Get Out and she loved us and she loved Midsummer. She she's liked a lot of the new more recent films, which I'm mm-hmm. really stoked about. Because mm-hmm. we're in a, in my opinion, I think we're in a fantastic time for horror right now. And I think it's only gonna get better, hopefully. I mean, as long as we have the same directors yeah. I know, as long as the directors and writers kind of stay in the in the field <laughs> and not branch out to you know blockbusters but we'll see james wan coming back <laughs> david yeah but, uh, <laughs> um but yeah it's i don't know it's great i think it's a uh, it's cool because i feel like we're not used to that type of movie that like a, in it like that type of movie but like done well i feel like because there's i feel like there was that really you know from 2000 to like 2009 there were just like this bland all these bland horror films that were just terribly color graded it was just mtv Mm -hmm. and all this other stuff it was like (laughs) everything was blue and everything was jump scares yeah (laughs) yeah and you can get away with jump scares if you're james wan you can get away with that yeah (laughs) if they're done well but i feel like all the jump scares from 2000 to 2009 were all those jump scares where you know, somebody is looking in the mirror and then they open it and then they close it and then their best friends behind them, like, hello. And, that's, and then the music comes on. It's every single jump scare was that same one. And I was like, or the cat jumping out of somewhere. Yeah. Like, that doesn't why, were, like, why were you in a dumpster for that do, long? Yeah, or like, why is <laughs> was it not meowing? For like- <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah. So, so, but such a strange time. It It's one of those things now when I rewatch them, they're fun for like nostalgia's sake Mm -hmm. but I yeah I don't know I just remember every time a horror movie would come out I was like I think I've seen this one before (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's so true (laughs) and so I'm like I love Ari Aster and uh, I -hmm. I think he's doing incredible things and like I think him like Robert Eggers and you know Jordan Peele and you know all these people we're talking about it's like they're just doing different things that horror is used to, which I think is really needed in the community. I feel like at least or in the filmmaking mm-hmm. world, because it's, you know, we're getting all these like Marvel films and stuff, which is great. You know, people love them, but we need, we, we need something different, you know, which is mm-hmm. we need original stuff, even if it's based on, you know, Candyman based on something, but it's still original and it's still, you know, might be a sequel or whatever. I don't know what it is officially, but I don't, I didn't really think much <laughs> about it. I kind of wanted to want to split it for myself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, like for the new Halloween film, I was, I literally didn't read anything, look at any images, watch the trailer. Like every time I went to a movie, I would leave for the trailer. So I, would, <laughs> uh, I was like, so, and then I, so I went to the convention, like the H40 convention where, you know, met all the actors and it was amazing. Uh, mask designers and everything. And so I saw the oh, film. That's so like, cool. I saw the film like two and a half weeks before it came out in Pasadena. And so we, we did like the movie location tour of all the locations of like the, all the originals. It was amazing. But um, where was I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's amazing. <laughs> Halloween's amazing. Um, 
I can't remember. Oh yeah. So I saw the film and then, you know, at, right at, I went straight to my hotel room and like, I literally watched all the trailers, looked at all the, you know, the reviews. It was just, I like it. I don't know. But then the new one came out and I got four minutes into not wanting to watch it and then watched it. So, <laughs> but uh, yes, but I don't know. Yeah. It is interesting time though, because the, mm-hmm. there's a lot of reboots and remakes which i think is a little bit divisive throughout the horror community about whether that is needed or not but it's also a time of a lot of new movies coming out i feel like people do forget that because there's so much focus on the reboots and the remakes because like you see oh they're coming out the new scream and that's all anybody wants to talk about that we do forget there are new completely original horror movies coming out right now i actually Mm -hmm. do feel like we have a pretty good mix Mm -hmm. but obviously we're going to be putting the focus on halloween kills that's because that's what people are are wondering is it going to live up or is it going to be a disappointment so i i get that but i i actually for the most part have been pretty happy with how they've been handling like these most recent reboots and remakes i hope that continues for Mm -hmm. steam (laughs) because i am one of those (laughs) people where i'm very interested in seeing i'm nervous i'm like nervous but excited at the same time yeah yeah me too (laughs) yeah we'll see (laughs) but i like i i like scream 4 so me too i I loved scream 4 yeah So I'm, I'm on a positive. I'm it's on the up and up for me. So I'm going to go in feeling that way. (laughs) Totally. No, sorry. Go for it. No, I was just, I was just going to tack on to that. There's also like a lot of newer creators, thanks to streaming. Now that we're kind of more in like a streaming world with Netflix, um, shutter, which just got introduced to when we started the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, but all these different places where people can now, get support for their films all these independent filmmakers there's because of that i think there's this big influx of new directors writers and movie makers all coming onto the scene kind of all at once and it's it's both like a double-edged sword because some of these people don't get to see traction just because there's so many to sift through and there are now so many that there's a little bit of saturation there but um in the in the same breath there are so many cool and unique ideas being created um like a couple months ago we did that slacks movie which was a yeah, horror yeah. movie about killer yep. jeans oh, which yeah. <laughs> which maybe like 10 years ago you would have said that and i'm like i'm never watching that movie but now with like the advent of where technology and filmmaking has come um was totally down to watch it and turned out it was a pretty good movie all things considered totally yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. so it's one of those things where like now because we have access to more means of making movies um i do think that leads to this kind of boom and the variety and amount of um movies that we can see especially in the horror genre too mm-hmm. um it's just really it's really cool to get more people in the game than just the big names that we all know mm-hmm. you know like oh yeah giving a little bit more of a voice to the independent uh movie maker mm-hmm. oh yeah i could not agree more and yeah i think shutter is like the perfect platform for that and i keep trying to get people on it i'm like you're gonna love it like if you like horror you'll love it like it's cheap get on there you know yeah yeah it's not, Why not? At all. ever since we got it i kept it the whole time like i never <laughs> Never did the little like, oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. they cancel this month. Like, no, <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's, there's there are a lot of great films on there. So, mm-hmm. I yeah, I agree. I love Shutter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, love, <laughs> um, I love Shutter. I was when I first got it because there was so much. There are so many titles that I was like, I've never I I guess I you know you get it and you expect it to be a Netflix where the majority of it is things that you've heard of and then the more you sift through it's like unknown titles but it's kind of the opposite for Shudder the majority of it is you know movies that you've probably never heard of and then they'll have some pretty well-known ones sprinkled throughout but I actually really like that because we've found a lot of movies that I wouldn't have probably even looked twice at if I was on Netflix like just looking through the horror genre I probably just would have like swiped right by them (laughs) but I don't know seeing them on Shutter, I'm like 
yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah, I kind of want to check this out. Like, because yeah. I don't, I don't think the majority of the movies that I've watched on there, I have enjoyed or they've been even if they weren't the greatest movie they were like exactly what I was looking for in that moment of t- in time mm-hmm. <laughs> like sometimes right. I I just want to watch a bad horror movie like mm-hmm. and that's good too <laughs> for sure and I think Shudder's is a perfect place for that I mean like a lot there's so many services obviously and that I, I find myself seeing Shudder's the only one where I'm like I will pick a random movie and watch it because like mm-hmm. you were saying more than half the films I've watched in there I've loved and it's just, it's great. And you can like, I usually don't like reviews. Like I don't like to read people's comments or anything because it just ruins it for me. But yeah. I feel like it's got a, such a specific audience that I can, you know, scroll through the first 10 or so. And it's, I can tell it'll be good or not. You usually, mm-hmm. even though I don't yeah. base my viewing experience off of that, but that definitely helps. Or Yeah. yeah. Shutter, Shutter reviews are definitely a little bit less toxic than some of the other ones <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> yes, for sure. 100%. Yeah, that's, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> that now, character you- drank pepsi instead of coke this is a one star <laughs> did not like, <laughs> did not like. <laughs> and they got some decent shows on there too yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They do. I, i'm more of a movie person like i i like shows when i watch them of course but it's so hard for me to start shows so i'm trying to get better at that because like my girlfriend's always like you should watch this show and i'm like ah, it's such a commitment you know 10 episodes yeah. are each i'm like Sure, I'll love it, but like, come on. But yeah. I, I need to start getting better at that because I know there's so many good shows out there and just, I know. Yeah, no, but I I feel the same because you know if you like it, that that's at least 10 hours of your life that you're like, well, now I need to finish this. Right. Mm-hmm. But, which is good because it's like, oh, at least you liked the show. But yeah, I, I do that all the time. I have a habit of, starting shows and then getting like halfway through i have like 10 different shows that i'm halfway through right now oh <laughs> <laughs> he does that <laughs> <Before two>, so. <laughs> <laughs> but i'm like i'll go back and finish these eventually but i just i, I instead of doing that i start a new show yeah I, I, i'll do i do pilots <laughs> that's that's my thing okay. with shows i'll watch the first episode of so many shows and then just realize what i did and just <laughs> i just set up <laughs> 10 different series to watch and then like i get overwhelmed and like now nah, i'm just gonna watch a movie instead <laughs> right get... totally <laughs> i'd rather watch fire 13th and you know this <laughs> <laughs> oh, i totally agree that's so funny. Now, have you guys being uh, performing act performing arts, have you guys acted in any horror, any kind of thriller, any sort of? Not yet. I would love to at some point just to like be, you know, on set for one of those things, but mm-hmm. not not yet in the career. Yeah. Fingers crossed, though. For sure. Yeah. I. No. Yeah. Me neither. Same thing. I would love to die in something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you put I think- that. <laughs> I just think that that would be really, really fun. Um, so yeah, definitely something that I would like to do. And I also write like horror okay, cool. movie scripts, um, which is really, really fun. And actually, I feel like writing the script makes me realize how hard it is to stay away from, you know, the same things that you see. Sure in all those horror movies so i get it i get it when they're in there because they're they are hard to avoid sometimes but Mm -hmm. no that's definitely like one thing where being in a horror movie if it ever was like an opportunity that came up i would definitely take it yeah there's so many cool parts of a horror movie that you could be a part of too it's like Mm -hmm. i think i think that's what interests me personally more is just how many different amazing roles go into a horror movie um I think like for me, the directing side of a horror movie is the most appealing because you get to kind of take all these moving pieces and and piece them together. Um, But like I was saying, from the writing of it to even I through our podcast, I've grown much more of an appreciation for um, costuming and makeup and that whole side of horror movies and just how much work goes into practical effects and making things look as real and visceral as we're used to seeing like there are just so many talented individuals that have to all kind of work in tandem to make these movies that we love Mm -hmm. that i just think horror is one of those genres where a lot of different people get a chance to shine and like kind of show their talents and the Mm -hmm. things they can add to a production 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like, you know, you have, you know, your other movie, other genre movies, and it's like, oh, great, you know, Viz Effects, you know, 80% of the movies Viz Effects mm -hmm. or all this stuff. But yeah, to you're totally right. And it's, I feel like that's not as appreciated as it should be in the horror genre, mm -hmm. especially it's like. It's a lot know, of work. It's a oh, so man. much work. Oh my gosh. And like, I, there was a doc on Shudder. I don't know if you guys have seen the, the Tom Savini doc or not. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I haven't. I haven't. I want, it's great. You should check I it out. It's, it. you're, you'll <laughs> love it. I mean, you're going to love it. But it's, it's like, I feel like more of those types of films need to be made just to showcase, you know, like Greg Nicotero and all these makeup artists mm -hmm. that they just, they, they're like the kings of horror, you know, like the, mm -hmm. people don't get it, you know, it's like, or even like Kane Hodder. I mean, it's not like, he's not like, you know, major actor, but like he does, you know, he's known for Jason Voorhees and it's like, you have to be, even he's just kind of standing there and like, you know, a machete swipe like yeah there's a certain there's a technique there's a, that, there's a way yeah. that there's a way that he does it that mm -hmm. you can't really rep replicate like everybody's got their own unique spin on something so mm -hmm. it, yeah it's like you you grow i think over time the more time you like spend with these movies you just you you can't help but grow an appreciation i'd hope i'd hope that <laughs> over time you'd um start thinking about those little things a bit more but yeah i agree i would love i especially because erica i think you've um because erica has uh quite a few horror dvds where she'll talk about the behind the scenes and like oh, the cool. extra stuff mm -hmm. um so it's gotten me more interested in like watching behind the scenes and like seeing how the movies get made um just to just to see all the different things that you don't really think about um mm -hmm. uh you bring up james Wan when we were covering um the conjuring movies like just watching them shooting <sighs> the different scares and like how they actually shot because some of the shots in those movies are crazy they're nuts it's ridiculous how good it is like, yeah <laughs> so and then but getting to see like how they do it like you got some dude on a crane with a camera like hovering over people to get that shot like i find that stuff absolutely fascinating mm -hmm. um and I, I i agree i would love to just see them put more of a spotlight on that just so people can see that other side of like how all these movies get made Hundred percent. Yeah, and it, even like the malignant trailer, like I think one of the spots, I think it was a fifteen or twenty second spot. It was just like a one take, you know, following her. I was like, he can even do this in trailers. Like it's crazy. And I always like. <laughs> and I remember talking about cinematography and you know, horror. Like I always show people the conjure, the first Conjuring film when they enter the house when the family's moving in. It's like a one take through all the rooms and just like it's yeah. Just so good. And the second one where they go above the. I think it's like in the second floor or something. It's like a I don't know. It's over top. It's just so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I love those shots. They give me every time with those shots. Me too. Oh my god. I'm it's, just it's and better. immediately I'm like, yep, that was <laughs> that was really good. 100. percent Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen In Search of Darkness on Shutter? In Search of Darkness. I feel like mm. I've seen the cover for you, it you probably have it's so they just released part two it's um it's two they're both docs they're like four and a half hours each but they're and they're both about 80s horror oh. so you check them out. <laughs> they interview everybody like robert england and uh everybody like everyone's in there um it's incredible mm -hmm. you should definitely give it if you have four and a half hours i mean split it up but it's in, it's really <laughs> incredible i would definitely recommend it oh okay, okay. yeah i'll definitely yeah. check that out yeah, yeah i think the first on one was like, as well right i think alley. the first one was like a kickstarter or something and then it got so popular and then the second one was just released so yeah. oh nice yeah. yeah they have some awesome documentaries on they there. really do oh I yeah i really enjoyed all of the ones that we've watched already because we mm. watched obviously we watched like the horror noir one. Oh, that one then, is oh my gosh yeah that, I reckon, one's, yeah, that one's amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> 100%. I feel like uh, after all these docs, I like have a whole, you know, my queue is ever growing, of course, you know, my movie queue. But though after watching all of those docs, it's like, how many more horror movies that I haven't seen are out there? I thought I've seen <laughs> all of them. Oh my gosh. I know there's so many. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard for us to pick like what movie we're going to be talking about any given week because there's just so many and we're like we um, we just get overwhelmed with choices and we're like do we want to talk about this maybe we'll wait until later and then we're like but when is later gonna <laughs> when will we ever come back to this movie who knows mm -hmm. i guess okay so how do you guys pick your movies then is it just kind of like you both agree on one or is it like it's yeah it's a little bit so... it, ch it definitely changes <laughs> yeah it definitely sure. changes we're not as um forward thinking as a lot of other podcasts and ie i mean 
that same week we're like so what are you what do you want to do this week <laughs> um okay. you, we we used to do it like that where it was like oh we we would both decide like what we wanted to do and now we've been kind of trying to do um like in every other week I choose and then he okay. chooses that way because we were like oh because our preferences differ we feel like that'll help you know broaden the genres that we talk about um so that's the way we've been doing it and then every once in a while we'll have a movie where we just know like either a new movie will be coming out or um like I think for our most recent Wishmaster episode mm -hmm. like Roshane was we we had watched that movie for a twitch watch party okay and he was like we need to talk about this on yeah. our show so i was like <laughs> okay like, <immediately. laughs> yeah. so it, it changes from from week to week but normally yeah it's like we'll just kind of discuss it and then one of us will pick one sure i mean you got to get to you know all of them anyway at some point so <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and there are a lot there are a lot <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well cool i mean i don't want to keep you guys too much longer i uh i, I really appreciate you hopping on with me and getting okay. you know getting your backstory and just hanging out <laughs> talking more so this is cool. what this is what we do this is cool. yeah, kind of the basis like <laughs> of our podcast is really just getting to sit down and then talk about a mutual thing that we with uh, that we like but also when we get to talk with other people too it's just like finding more and more friends within the genre being like oh yeah. You're a horror nerd too. Let's go. Let's talk Perfect. about it. <laughs> yes. I was literally like out somewhere today, earlier today. And this guy had like a Friday 13th shirt on. And I was like, I was like, Oh, I love your shirt. And like, we were talking for like 20 minutes after that. And I was like, this is great. It everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice. How easily that like, I don't know, it just sparks conversation. And then I feel like at least for us, the horror community has been so, are some of like the friendliest people. Yes. So nice. So mm -hmm. welcoming. We'll just sit and talk to you for however long about horror. And it's, yeah, it's just so much fun. Like anytime we talk to someone, have spoken to someone or collabed with someone, it has always been like a blast. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It's, it's so fun. I was literally in New York city this past week. I got home yesterday and I was out at this bar and I like someone meant we, someone was talking about horror movies. So I like obviously went up to them and started talking to them and <laughs> me and this guy literally we're up and we like went to get food. We we're up until 5 a.m. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> and he's like, should we go see Candyman tomorrow? I was like, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do it, but <laughs> but the, up until the, two. So <laughs> the idea was there. <laughs> the idea was there. So that's all that matters. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's a really fun community. And uh yeah, I just love it. That's why, you know, when I went to the Halloween convention, it was like my first ever convention. Never, you know, never did anything like it before. And mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, I went by myself because no one wanted to go with me. And I was like, all right, I'll, you know, I'll make the best of this. And I walked in and it's just cool. Everyone's so friendly and they're like, it's cool because, you know, everyone's there for the same thing. They're there for Halloween. Yeah. It's like you can mm -hmm. nerd about it and everyone's going to nerd out with you. And literally during the Halloween two panel, when Dick Warlock, who played Michael Myers, when he was talking, this guy earlier had him like he was proposing to his girlfriend in front of the stage with like Dick Warlock was like basically called him upstate. He like talked to him before the the convention and he was like, hey, can you do this for me? Can you call like, my girlfriend up and I'm going to propose to her? I was like, this is hilarious. Like, this is just so funny. <laughs> oh my That's gosh. so sweet. Uh, I know, that's right? <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, I really, cool. I really want to go to a convention. I've never been to one. Yeah, same. And then, mm -hmm. you know, now that we're like fully diving into it, obviously conventions are not, <laughs> not totally right. happening right now. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping in the future, I, cause a, I just, I really want to go. I think it would be a lot of fun and B I'm sure we would see so many people that we've met online at the convention. It'd be a great 100%. place to meet, meet everyone that we've been talking to uh, mm. online in person. So yeah. I'm really It'd be really cool excited. to get like a little booth there. You could do like a live interview or something. That'd be so oh fun. Oh my gosh. I feel if like only I know <laughs> the, ner the nerves might hit there though doing it from the comfort of home yeah. is always so but doing it in public like yeah this is a lot of pressure <laughs> you can't just cut it in post and you're doing a live interview yeah oh my gosh <laughs> we would have to start off we would have to again do like a practice live interview with just someone random just to see right. how it goes <laughs> right <laughs> oh that's funny 
well, cool. I mean, yeah, I'll let you guys go and, uh, you know, good luck with everything. And I, you know, I hope we stay in touch over social and whatnot. And, you know, maybe we can collab on a podcast at some point, talk about horror movies. Yes. Or, you know, that would be awesome. Yes. I would love to chat, you know, cause like the guys I do my podcast with, like, it's great because we all have different movie tastes, but they're not super into horror. Like I am. Mm-hmm. So it's, I'm trying to avoid picking the, the ones that they wouldn't like. So. Yeah, no, that would be yeah. so, that would be awesome. We be would fun. love that. And definitely, yeah. now that we know that you what horror you're into, we'll have yeah. to plan around that. In yeah, the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> fun. Pick a good movie. <laughs> yes, I'm down for whatever, anything, anything, anytime. So nice. But, well, cool. Well, have a good weekend, you guys, and uh, Labor Day weekend. So no work on Monday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we forgot. <laughs> I know. I forgot today, too. I was like, oh, great. Cool. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Yeah. No Ooh. work on Monday. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm going to celebrate right. by seeing Candyman tomorrow, and then I'll listen to your podcast, yes. and we'll go from there. Very <laughs> nice. So, cool. How exciting. Well, great. Thank you so much for having us. This yeah, was no, this has been a very awesome. fun conversation. Yeah, for sure. I'm always down. So just let me know when you guys want to chat and I'm all about it. So all right. Perfect. Cool. Will do. Well, thank you again Great. and have yeah. a good night. Yeah, you as well. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> all right. Take it easy. Right, bye. 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 Yeah. bye.